Caffeine is one of a select few supplements that is actually proven to enhance the performance of the majority of athletes who use it. And you can go back to the first video in this series to discover if it's likely to work for you. When you're starting to figure out how to integrate caffeine into your fueling and hydration plan for a training session or race, you've got two variables to play with, the timing and the dosage. Both of these are going to be heavily impacted by the overall duration of the activity. So what we're going to do here is break it down into different time brackets and explain optimal caffeine usage for each of them. For short endurance events that last up to about three hours, pre-caffeinating is where you'll get most bang for your buck. We've done a video on this previously with lots more detail, but the summary is three to six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight around 60 minutes before the start will see you through the majority of the race. That's because the half-life of caffeine lasts up to four or five hours in most people, meaning it will still be active and in your system right to the end of the race. Anecdotally, speaking with a lot of elite athletes, we do find many of them will use caffeine in events of this duration as well but you've got to make sure that you take the caffeine way before the end. There's a temptation to leave it right near the finish, but because caffeine takes 45 to 60 minutes to peak in the bloodstream, you really need to be taking it on an hour before you want the maximum effect. In slightly longer events, those up to about five hours, all of the rules about pre-caffeinating still apply, but there's a far stronger case for topping up with caffeine as the event goes on. You can do this in different ways. You can sort of drip caffeine in, in smaller doses throughout, or you can take larger hits less frequently. That's something to test out in training to find out what works for you. Something like one or two PF30 caffeine gels, each containing 100 milligrams of caffeine, spaced out throughout the middle part of the event is a great way to achieve this. When events start to get a bit longer, we're now talking in the five to 12 hour range, the general guidelines for caffeine consumption start to fall down a little bit because they don't really take into account the idea that you might fully metabolize some of the caffeine you had pre-event during the event itself. So for these kind of events, pre-caffeinating is still important, but then at some point, relatively early on in the race, you're gonna to need to start topping up frequently with small doses, ideally, to keep your caffeine levels high so you don't experience any sort of crash. The exact amount you're going to need to take in is going to be very individual because it's going to rely on the rate at which you metabolise the caffeine in your system. But the use of things like caffeine gels on the bike in an Ironman, sips of Coca-Cola on the run can all help to keep those caffeine levels topped up so that you're still feeling strong and well caffeinated towards the end. When race durations start to exceed 12 hours and we get into really extreme ultra territory, there can be a much more tactical use of caffeine, especially if you're gonna be racing through the night when your circadian rhythms start to kick in and make you feel sleepy. And in these circumstances, it can actually be of benefit to minimize and only use a small amount of caffeine pre-race and during the early stages so that you save a little bit of the effect for when your body is naturally getting very tired, fatigue levels are high and you're trying to go to sleep. There is no coincidence around the fact that the majority of DNFs in ultra endurance races happen in the early hours of the morning, and that is definitely linked to higher fatigue levels occurring at that time. So if you can, save the caffeine use for a little bit later on, start to increase the dosages about an hour or two before you know you're gonna feel really tired, and that may well help you get through those dark times so you can see the sunrise the next day and get to the finish feeling very strong. Ultimately, like any aspect of your fueling and hydration strategy for an event, caffeine use requires a bit of trial and error to dial it in. The guidelines in this video are just that, they're not prescriptive, but they do give you a starting point to start that trial and error process. If you'd like some further help with this, you can book a one-to-one -one video call with our athlete support team, and we'd love to hear from you.